Hey everybody, this is Jake Rainus, and today I wanna to show you how to do a cool gradient effect with your calligraphy. So this is an example of one that I've made, and I'll show you how to make this from scratch in Photoshop. It's quite easy. You don't need to have much experience with Photoshop, and I'll walk you through it the best I can, but uh, we're just gonna be working with a couple layers. So what I did is I actually took this photograph on my iPhone, and I brought it into Photoshop. Uh, nothing too special here, just a regular old iPhone photo. And when I open this document, I just have one layer over here on my right. If you don't have your layers panel visible, go over to window and you should see your layers here. Make sure that's checked off. So once you have that, what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna add some adjustments to this just to, to make the lines a little bit more crisp. So if you don't have your adjustments, you can do the same thing, window, make sure adjustments is checked off. And I'm just gonna add some levels here and what this is going to do is allow me to boost the contrast a little bit so bringing the the darks in a little bit also bringing the lights in a little bit and that's really going to make my paper easier to select and separate from the layers so once i have that um, i'm also just going to desaturate this a little bit only reason is because i have some 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 deeper blues over there so that's good so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my magic wand tool over here and you can get to that with the letter W on your keyboard. I've set my tolerance here to 50%, and we'll also wanna make sure the contiguous check mark is unchecked. Tolerance here will adjust based on the complexity of your photo, so you may wanna play with that a little bit to see what kind of selections you're getting. But 50 is good for this. I've tested out with this image, so I'm comfortable with that. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to select the paper here. And you'll see what that's done is it's pretty much selected all of the white here. And if I was to isolate this, I'm gonna uh, control copy this onto a new layer. And if I hide it, you'll see all I'm left with is the paper there. So it's a little bit hard to see. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna add a little background layer here just to illustrate that I have separated the paper layer from the rest of the photograph. So that's good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of this. It was just for illustrative purposes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this again, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here on the Layers menu, and I'm gonna select the Add Layer Mask button. You wanna make sure that you already have your selection going, and what that will do is it will separate that mask onto its own little layer mask here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this layer, and we'll, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna hide it for now. We'll come back to that in a little while. And then I'm gonna add a new blank layer here, and I'm gonna put it on the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my gradient tool, and I'm just gonna put a gradient like that. We can come back and adjust that later. But that's gonna be the basis of our gradient effect. So now uh, what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that I am only coloring the letters themselves. So back here on this layer mask that I created, I am going to select it. And you'll notice that regardless of what color you might have selected over here, I have orange and red. But if I select the layer mask, I'm just gonna have black and white. And what that means is when I have my brush, so here's my brush, right? So if I have white and I color over my layer mask with white, it is going to reveal what was originally part of that image. Likewise, if I have black selected and I go back over it, it is going to remove that image in a reductive way. So that is how you add and uh, reduce layer masks. But what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I have my table showing in the background. So I'm going to make sure I have white selected. I'm just gonna go roughly around the edge of my paper here, color this in, and yours may be a little bit different than mine, but the, the concept is still the same. So now we're almost here. We have, uh, we have our, our letters isolated. They're colored over nicely, and this looks pretty good. The only thing is it doesn't look too real, and that's because there's a solid layer of color going over this. And you'll, you'll recall in the original we had here, um, you can actually see the strokes of the ink overlapping, and that kind of gives it a nice organic, realistic effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, you, as you recall, I duplicated this layer, and I'm going to bring it back. And um, you'll notice if I hide the top layer, um, that, that's what I have again. I wanna hide the layer mask of this bottom layer. So I'm just gonna delete it because we don't actually need it. Now, if I was to show this again, you'll see basically we have um, what was there before, but because of our layer mask is basically a window through to our 
our uh, layer that is untouched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the opacity of this down. And you'll notice as I bring the opacity down, that color is going to start to go through. Now, if I was to bring it all the way down, we're kind of back to where we started, right? It's this solid overlay, which we don't necessarily want because it doesn't look too realistic. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit here. And that will, as you can see, if I zoom in a little bit, you can start to see the strokes coming through. So that's pretty much it. Now, the cool thing about this is I can easily go back and make these gradients whatever I want. And what you may want to do is you can go to blending options and bring this over here. You can do a gradient overlay and that will allow you to select different gradients. Uh, maybe like a rainbow effect here, which is kind of kind of nice. Um, or if you want to use your own custom colors, you can do that too. So let's switch this over to maybe a, uh, a light a light blue in our foreground and maybe kind of a sea foam sea foam green in our background and I'm going to go back with my gradient tool go back over it and uh, I can adjust this gradient to however I want and so that's pretty much all there is to it um, now sometimes I like to also work on a dark background so this was actually black paper uh, that I drew with white ink and I put this kind of abstracted black letter B over it and this effect can actually uh, be the exact same um, with uh, an inverse image so what I'm going to do in this case is once again I'm going to select this uh, this background color, I'm going to duplicate it and you'll see here, um, I have like this empty window into the background. And if I show my, my gradient, you can see it starts to show through. Once again, since it's solid, it looks kind of unrealistic. So um, what, I, what I can do here is bring my second layer back and I can set it to multiply or I can just set it to normal and bring the opacity down a little bit and let that color begin to show through. So yeah, that's really all there is to it. Um, I hope you enjoy. This is a good way to kind of spice up your Instagram posts if you're working with uh, solid stroke calligraphy, a uh, nice way to bring color to things. So hope you enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions.